First, the short outline for this video. Uh, let's assume we have an airfoil and we have all the data for this airfoil. Uh, lift drug coefficients, uh, lift versus drug and so on. So we have this data either from simulation uh, with uh, X-foil or from the wind tunnel data. So the question is uh, how to pick the best airfoil for our application. And uh, although we have all the data, we know that uh, we cannot fly an airfoil. We have to build the wing. So in this video we're going to build the wing and then we study the performance of this wing and see how the, uh, how the performance of an airfoil affects the performance of the wing. So this is the goal. So the first step is to simulate the wing. So I'm using uh, software XFLR5 software, so we uh, have done uh, this in the previous video. And what I'm looking for, I'm looking at different wings. So I'm going to uh, simulate wing, wings with different uh, aspect ratio. So aspect ratio is the ratio between wing length and the wing uh, width or the, co the cord length. So this is the aspect ratio, so I'm going to use things with different aspect ratio and so on. And as a result, I'm going to uh, obtain graphs for, for this wing. So the first graph is uh, the graph for the airfoil, and then we have the graphs for wings with different aspect ratio. So I'm going to obtain those graphs, and uh, I also study the uh, drag of this wing. So for instance, here on those uh, images, you can see the induced drag. The vortices are formed on the back, on the tips of the wing. So this is the main source of the uh, induced drag. So we're going to look into this. So we're going to plot the graphs for the total drag equal to the induced drag. This is the drag which is caused by the wing. Uh, finite length. And then we're going to uh, look at the viscous drag as well. After that we're going to come to the uh, analytic approximation and going to find that uh, this simple equation actually gives exactly the same result as the software. So it's a bit uh, strange. So I'll talk about this later. Uh, but at this moment I will just point out that uh, it's kind of obvious when you have the two-dimensional wing like, like, uh, like this, so the, 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 the blue curve this is the dimensional wing. So the 3D wing is going to have the uh, worse performance. But if you extend this wing to infinity, like, like this, make it longer and longer, it's eventually it's going to uh, approximate the performance of uh, the 2D airfoil. Okay, so let's get started. In this video, we're going to continue uh, to study this Marvel software, XFLR5, we have found in the previous section. And the goal for us is to design a wing for our plane. So the first thing is to choose the airfoil for this wing. And uh, we'll do that. We'll go to direct foil design. And then we're going to pick the foil. So I'm not going to be very specific or original at this, at this point, And I'm just going to choose the NACA foil. So the NACA foil is 0009. 9 is the thickness of the wing. And 00 means that uh, the wing is symmetric. Okay, to make this uh, profile more visible, you go into the style section and choose the color. A red color is, is a good color. And we also change the thickness of this uh, line. Okay, now we can clearly see it. Next step is to uh, make sure we have sufficient number of points. So if we choose a bit different style to see those points. Okay, so those are points we have by the default, but I'm going to increase the number, go to the refine globally, and then I'm going to, so 150 is sufficient, but I will, to be, to be absolutely sure that uh, it's not the issue, put 200 points. Save. So here is the profile that we have. So I want to see those points. So we have enough enough of those points on the airfoil. So after that we are going to go to the next step and define the 
wing. For this purpose you go to this section, a wing and plane design, you can just press style plus 6. So here is the section, next we are going to right mouse click and uh, edit option. This option we have the wing design, uh, and then we have fin, we have elevator, and we have wing number 2. So we don't need, we have the body, we don't need any of those, so we leave those options, we leave those boxes unchecked, and we just use the wing, the main wing. And then we press define. So I have defined it previously. Uh, so how to, how to do it, it's uh, actually very simple. What you do, you uh, use those uh, columns. So first is Y, Y is the uh, length of the wing. It's uh, actually we, we define the left or right part of the wing and the second part is symmetric. So for the left, for instance, part we have uh, the definition as follows. So Y goes from 0 to 0 0.5 meters, so from 0 to 0 0.5. Then we have the chord, chord that meaning that the width of this wing is 0 0.1 meter. So what we have, we have 1 meter wing span, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1 meter, and then we have 0 0.1 meter the chord. Uh, the chord. So meaning that the aspect ratio of this wing is 1 to 10. Uh, next, we can define offset, meaning uh, how the wing is going to be tilted. We don't touch this part. Uh, then the head roll defines the V-shape of the wing. We have the zero degree, so it's absolutely flat. Next, we have twist definition, so how the, those tips are twisted. Tips and the middle part. Don't touch this again. Uh, leave it uh, at zero. So this is the most simple uh, this is the most simple wing we can probably design, just a flat simple wing. And then we're going to add some complexity to the design, but uh, the first step I, I would like to have it as simple as possible. So the second most important thing is to define the profile of this wing. So I have two profiles to choose, I'm choosing Naka 0 0.0009. Uh, we have chosen just a moment before. The same is for this section. So this is the middle section is 009, and uh, this is the same section. And if we uh, zoom in with the mouse wheel, we're going to see this Naka profile at the tip of the wing. Okay, so this is done. Uh, next we have a definition of, uh, for the computation purposes, the number of panels that we are using. I'm leave it as it was before. And I can see those panels by clicking on uh, this button, panels. So I can zoom in and take a look. So I assume that the computation happens on those panels and then the results basically the sum of the, not the sum, but a combination of the results for each separate panel. Okay, uh, so this is done. We save the result, save, and we move to the link again. Uh, to see it, we just press surfaces. Boom, and we have it. So this is the ring. And uh, the result is, uh, is OK. And now we're going to move to the next step, the simulation of this ring. And to run the analysis, we go to the analysis and define the analysis. Uh, in this case, I would like to have the most simple analysis possible. So I just uh, need few options. Uh, to alter. So the first one is to choose the type. So I would like to have the simplest one. Uh, type is the fixed speed. So I'm choosing 20 meters per, uh, per second. It's about uh, 70 kilometers per hour. Uh, next, what I'm going to uh, choose analysis method. Uh, method type. So the, the four, four possible methods that are available. LLT, VLM1, VLM2, and a 3D panel method. So I'm choosing this one, the most simple one, I think. Next, I don't need those options, those are for the plane design. And uh, the, the only option which might be interesting is uh, error data. So if I look at this option, so what I can do, I can change the atmospheric properties by changing the temperature or altitude, and this is going to give me the corresponding Reynolds number. So at, at my, uh, in my case, I 
have those things, so it's going to fly very close to ground and have temperature of 15 degrees. And that actually gives me the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number uh, corresponds to this uh, speed. If you change the speed, it's going to uh, we're going to have a different Reynolds number. Okay, so we are done with this uh, definition. And now we are ready for the analysis. We set the range for the alpha from minus uh, 3 to 10 degrees, step 0 0.5, and we click this button. And boom, uh, we have this mistake, this error message is uh, appearing. So it says that a given Reynolds number could not be uh, interpolated, the solution could not be interpolated. And we have this for all of the alphas, starting from minus 3 degree, so minus 3 degree to 10 degrees. And uh, why this is happening? And the answer is uh, the viscosity. So it's easier to design a big plane than to design a small plane, because we have to include viscosity into our consideration. And the method we have been using for the wing simulation is LT, VLM and 3D panel methods are all designed for non-viscous in viscous assumption. And this is the problem. For, for the small model, we have to include the viscosity in our, in our solution, otherwise for the given size of the plane and the speed, uh, uh, this viscous solution is kind of a big part of the of the result and you cannot get the right result for the drug and so on. So now we take a look at the plane. So this is the schematic uh, image of this uh, plane and we look at the, at the wing and if you notice that uh, the wing actually has different uh, size at the root position and at the tip. So we have, uh, because we have different uh, size, different chord length, uh, and we know that Reynolds number depends from the uh, chord length and the speed, we notice that it has actually different Reynolds number, the root and the tip. And if we uh, plot this, uh, those numbers on the axis, Reynolds number axis, we're going to have two, two points, which actually have different position and they have different coefficient for those positions. Uh, so what the software wants us to do is uh, to take, to find the results outside uh, this range. So basically look at the boundaries, look a bit, uh, uh, look to a bit high Reynolds number and a bit low Reynolds number. So if we get two Reynolds number outside this uh, range uh, and we use for this X foil, then this result can be used to interpolate solution and get the kind of approximate Reynolds number in the range we are looking for. Yeah, so we use XFOIL and the XFOIL has this uh, beautiful option to uh, simulate boundary layer and to get the viscous drug and so on. So we use this uh, this software. So fortunately this software is part of the of this uh, program. So what we do, we just uh, go to the FOIL analysis, XFOIL direct analysis, and then we uh, define the Reynolds number. So what we need, uh, take a look here. So for the analysis, so the analysis we have to uh, look at the real number which are a bit lower than this and a bit higher than this. Yes, and ex uh, one remark. So in this particular case of this uh, flat wing, we do have single Reynolds number, so we don't have the tip Reynolds number and the root Reynolds number, it's just the one. But uh, I think it's the software uh, kind of issue, it wants to have two Reynolds number to make the interpolation, so we have to provide it two Reynolds number which are actually a bit away from the, uh, from the one at which we are looking for solution. So once again we go to the X-Foil direct analysis and then we uh, choose the analysis. So we choose the Reynolds number, so we need, uh, so I choose a bit low number, 100 thousands. 
uh, the same uh, the same parameters here as previously and then we run a uh, random analysis and we found the solution <coughs> so we have small small issues not all points are converging uh, so to make absolutely uh, sure that you're going to have uh, maybe not absolutely but you're going to increase the convergence if you look at the analysis choose the XFOIL advanced settings and in this case what they have iteration limit it, it was set to 100 uh, it's a good idea to set at least to 300 or 500 to make sure that we're going to have convergence the analysis again Oop. and we have points so at this moment it's converged the solution converged at the big angles of attack uh, there are some issues because the, the foil is not designed for the lower Reynolds number so the narco foil are designed for, for high speed a big chord length in our case we have small small plane a small speed so we have to we have some issues with the convergence of this uh, particular foil okay so we just uh, we found the solution for one Reynolds number and now let's uh, so we find so found solution here and now let's find solution there so we have to look at the bigger Reynolds number okay iteration point define analysis and what we're going to do, we're going to have a higher round number, 150 thousands. Okay. Analyze. Now it's converged. But conversion on this angle. Oh, yeah. So some issues with the convergence at high angle of attack and picking the high iteration uh, picking the high number of iteration meaning that we have to uh, wait a bit longer than usual so we have found uh, two curves so we have uh, drug lift coefficient uh, computed for the two Reynolds number so those uh, Reynolds number, the blue lines, uh, which are away from the Reynolds number of our interest. So what software does, it uh, interpolates the results and get the curve for us somewhere in between. So uh, so this is part is uh, completed. So we used XFOIL to find to find in this solution a bit away from the Reynolds number of our interest, and then we are ready for the simulation. Of the of the wing. Okay, so this is the wing, and uh, we have defined the analysis uh, previously. So you do you don't have to do anything else. Just press analyze once again, and it's converging beautifully. So uh, there is no issues. Converge right away after four iterations. So so we have the results. Now we can look at the polars. Boom. It's beautiful. Okay, so this is the way how you uh, simulate the wing in this XLR5 software. And uh, now we're ready for the next step. And before we continue, let's uh, check other uh, computational methods. So we go to analysis uh, uh, and we choose different methods. So this is the first method and then we have uh, two more, uh, three more different types. So let's uh, let's calculate for each of them. Let's say this one. Okay. Okay. This is the the first. Second. And before we continue, let's uh, go to the. Uh, analysis and to check other methods available for the simulation. So we go here and the analysis we have LOT methods, uh, VLM1, VLM2 and three panels. So let's compute uh, the results for all of them. So 
So after running simulation for four different methods, uh, I can say that the four results uh, are very similar, very close. So actually, to see the difference between those results, what you have to do, you have to zoom, zoom in, because you cannot see it from the distance. It's almost uh, identical lines, maybe here. So the induced drug coefficient is a bit different for those methods. And we know that uh, that one method is a bit different, but the, the rest three methods, methods are very similar. And if you look here, so this, uh, this method, uh, LT, uh, it's a, a bit a bit different than those three math methods and the results are pretty similar so there is no point to choose one over another I think but uh, maybe LT is a good because it's a bit different and then the, uh, maybe VLM2 is also good. Now once we have chosen the method uh, I would like to have uh, results for the different speed uh, once again, analysis, define analysis, so you can, you can hit F6 uh, to, to make it fast. So in this analysis, what we can do, we can choo choose different speeds, so not 20 meters per second, but let's say 10 meters per second. Oh, and we have different variance number, 68 uh, thousandths. So we can have different speeds. And a run simulation for, for each speed, to run simulation for each speed, we uh, first have to uh, we first have to find the corresponding Reynolds number for the airfoil. So we go here uh, for foil uh, file and uh, direct export direct analysis export direct analysis and what we have here we have analysis uh, analysis threaded batch analysis so just uh, batch analysis doesn't matter and here we choose the list for the Reynolds number. So we choose the list uh, first for the corresponding Reynolds number, which corresponds exactly to the speed. And secondly, you're going to have the uh, Reynolds number which are a bit off uh, those uh, numbers at which you're going to find the results. So that we're going to have the... Where is my graph? So we're going to have the results at which you run simulation, the red Reynolds number, and then the boundaries. So once we have defined uh, those... Uh, numbers what I do I just run the simulation oh. so just press uh, analysis oh. so you just press analyze and it's going to run analyze for, for all of the all of the runs numbers it will take some time but I have done this already as you can see from those graphs so after this is done uh, we can go back to the wind complaint design and uh, analyze for different for different speeds 40 60 80 so i have done this already because i was not wasting my time and i just can uh, jump to the conclusions about this simulation so, so this is the Reynolds number, an airfoil, and this is the wing performance. So I also done this for different methods. So th this is the LOT method for different speeds. So we can uh, see here 10, 20, 40, uh, 60, and 80 meters per second, LOT1 method. And uh, we got the results. And we know that uh, it's a bit uh, different actually. It's a bit different, and in a way, it uh, resembles uh, airfoil simulation, two-dimensional airfoil. So we also have this uh, small differences, for, for instance, for lift coefficient versus alpha, and so on. And we have this for the LOT method. We have small difference for the lift coefficient versus alpha, and so on. And then I have done this for the VLM2 method, and I was surprised to find that, for instance, lift coefficient versus alpha is just the same for different speeds. So we have different speed, 10, 20, 40, 80 meter, meter per, per second, but the lift coefficient is the same for each of those speeds. The same is uh, for the induced drug. So this, this is a bit strange. Okay, 
so uh, after that we are ready for the next step okay let's uh, go to the software and export the data for the different uh, for the different velocity so what I'm doing here I'm uh, choosing the polars export all polars and then you choose a folder uh, okay and after that you press select and here is the files so here's our files so, so uh, those are different methods uh, VLM2 and LRT for different speed and here's what we have inside and I'm doing this because I would like to use Python to understand, to study the data inside of the files you can do it in the software but for me Python is uh, easier and kind of more intuitive to work with ok, here is my Python uh, the script is very simple, you just load the data for the foil and for the wing and you specify the vectors with the data inside so after that once you know what is actually what you can plot the, the graphs so for instance uh, lift versus alpha and drag versus alpha for the airfoil lift versus drag for the airfoil for the airfoil and then we uh, plot for the wing so the file uh, the, in this software we have polars for the airfoil and for the wing so you can plot it for the airfoil and then you can put it for a wing and then you can compare the results so this is the wing so lift versus drag and here is our interesting graph so we have drag, induced drag and viscous drag and as we have discussed previously the viscous drag is, any, uh, is a problem because you have to specify the reference number in X foil to, to get the results so the software can approximate exact information from there and uh, here is the three different uh, graphs so the first one is the blue one induced drug the green one is viscous drug and then the total graph is the red the red graph uh, the red curve and if you uh, add a viscous drug to induced drug you exactly get the total drug of the for the wing so this is good to know so we combine the two and you get the uh, results in drug for the link so the lift coefficient is the same as previously and now is the fun part we plot the link uh, versus foil so uh, at given speed I can plot for the foil and for the wing and see the lift coefficient and then the same is for the drug so the blue one is for the foil and uh, the red one is for the wing so the, the small difference although here you, you have the perfect correspondence talk about this later so lift versus drag so here is uh, for the foil we have this blue curve and here is for the wing so for the wing we see right away the performance is not as good as for the foil we do not have such a wide range for the uh, for the low, low uh, drag coefficient for the given lift so for instance here for the given uh, lift coefficient 0 0.8 we have drag uh, 0 0.0515 and uh, and here you probably have to go to 0 0.04 so so the airfoil is definitely winning so okay and next uh, we go to the airfoil aspect ratio so we're going to uh, simulate simulate the wing uh, with different aspect ratio so we go here to the software and we go to the plane and then we uh, go to define uh, current plane and edit then define the, the wing performance so you uh, choose the geometry of the wing differently so in this case we have uh, the aspect ratio 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 because we have two calves we have one and the width uh, of the chord is 0 0.1 so we have the aspect ratio 10 if you put it one here we're going to have a longer wing so you are going to define the different wings and run simulation for all those wing, wings yes and uh, I would like also while we're here to show the actual what we can see in the uh, what we can see 
uh, in this uh, in this section so the airplane section what you can do you can uh, choose the so you can choose the, the polo the current polo that you wish so we have a couple of those so let's say this one and then you can uh, show for instance pressure lift oh now we have a pressure point zero degrees so let's uh, make it high angle of attack let's say 4.5 so now we have the, the, the lift so to rotate this wing what you should do you should press the wheel on the mouse and hold it and then you can rotate it so like for this like this induce drag so induce drag is very small and then uh, what else viscous drag is more significant uh, downwash and the, the fun the fun option for the SLM2 method is uh, streamlines so you see the beautiful streamlines behind the, the wing and if you rotate it like this you can see the, the vortices so yes Okay, so the vortices are forming uh, on the tips of the wing. It's a beautiful uh, illustration of the performance. And I, s I think that uh, the green line is lift. It's not actually a coefficient of lift by uh, actual lift. So it's good to keep in mind. Okay, so this is done. Now let's go to Python. Okay. So here is uh, my aspect ratio code. So what I'm, I'm doing, I'm just extracting those files for different uh, aspect ratio and then extracting the data for each file. And uh, I have this loop. So in each loop, this is happening. And then I plot the, the data of, of interest. Let's say uh, induced drug versus alpha. I have plotted this graph for different aspect ratio readings. Uh, but I have the results somewhere else. So those are the results I obtained. So first, uh, we have the speed 20 meters per second. Uh, we can look at the lift coefficient for the for the wing uh, versus different alpha alphas. So we also have the foil performance. So the foil is blue, and the wing performance is in different colors uh, depending on the aspect ratio. So for instance, 20 the red. It, we see it's very close. The lift of this wing is very close to the airfoil performance. And the longer wing is actually the closer the uh, lift is to the airfoil. So the 3D space basically becomes 2D space and the lift coefficient becomes the same in a way. Okay, uh, and if you have a small aspect ratio 2.5, then uh, the lift coefficient is actually not as good as for airfoil. Then we go to the drug. So the total drug is again. So we have this graph. Uh, the blue uh, line is the wind performance, the airfoil performance. Uh, the goal is to have a small drag as possible, so close to zero is good. So the, the airfoil performs well, and then we have different wings, different aspect ratio. And again, uh, the red wing is the winner. It's uh, the smallest drag for the given aspect ratio 20. Like if you probably go higher than that, 40 or some, something, you're going, going to have. Uh, even a uh, smaller drug okay so then in this in this file what we have uh, so in this file we also have induced drug induced drug and uh, viscous drug so we put those uh, things separately and as you know from the previous uh, result if you combine induced drug and viscous drug you're going to have the total drug that you have so induced drug is the drug uh, created by the finite length of the wing and the vortices are forming the tip is actually the cause for, for this drug and the viscous drug is uh, the result of the wing arriving over the air and now let's take a look at those those uh, things so obviously the, the smaller the wing the, the smaller the wing surface uh, the smaller the friction so the smaller the viscous drug so if you look at those uh, graphs you know that for example for the long uh, wing span so the aspect ratio is 20 it's a long wing so we have a huge not huge but a big big drug 
uh, viscous drug. So the wing has a big surface, so we have uh, lots of friction. And if we have a short wing, the, the yellow curve, the aspect ratio is 2.5, so the length to the chord length is only 2.5, so there is no friction, so the viscous drug is unimportant. So the sh short wings are definitely uh, better if you would like to, to reduce the viscous drug. But if you look at the induced drug, the, the picture is the opposite. Because for the short wings, as we have seen previously, we have lots of vortices on the tips. And for the, uh, and for the long wings, we don't have the vortices, so we have less of induced drug for the long wing and uh, lots of induced drug for the short wing. So, and that's what we see on this graph. So, uh, the red curve is the induced drug for the long wing with uh, aspect ratio 20, and the yellow curve is the induced drug for the short wing, 2.5 aspect ratio. So, uh, those two graphs kind of playing on the opposite sides. So, uh, from one point of view, you would like to have uh, the wing is short if you would like to. Uh, reduce the viscous drug and from the second point of view you want to have wing long uh, long wing so that you uh, don't have to uh, uh, have the induced drug created by the vortices on the tips but anyways you combine th those two and you uh, get the total total drug and now we come to this interest interesting uh, region like, like this region for instance uh, have it somewhere else yes I have it here uh, maybe not here, but somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, so the blue line is the airfoil, and then we have the red curve corresponding to the wing. So we know that uh, at the minimum uh, position we have the drug, which is uh, the viscous drug. So the viscous drug resembles the airfoil. And doesn't matter, like if you have a longer short wing, it's, uh, you still have at this point at zero alpha, alpha uh, at zero alpha, at alpha equal to zero degrees, you have uh, almost identical values for the for the airfoil and for the viscous drug of the wing. And then you have the induced drug. It's uh, start to happen at high angles of attack. And uh, here you maybe at two or three degrees you have curves going up. Although the airfoil uh, kind of goes down, the drug for the for the wing actually go, uh, goes up. So uh, small small details or small details of the wing and uh, airfoil performance. What else do I have? Uh, I have this graph, lift versus drag, for a different aspect ratio. So the blue, again, the blue line is the airfoil performance. The red line is uh, air, air, uh, is uh, wing with aspect ratio 20. So this is the red. Uh, then we have the manga, blue and uh, green and yellow. So those are different aspect ratio. So you start from 2.5. 5, 10, 20, and the airfoil itself. So as we increase the airfoil, we kind of approximate the, the uh, as we increase the aspect ratio, we approximate to airfoil. And uh, you definitely can say that airfoil is performing best on this graph. And maybe the uh, wing with high aspect ratio is kind of approaching this performance. But the viscous drug is uh, making bad contributions, so we have the uh, deviation from the perfect curve in this case. Okay, so th those graphs are uh, pictures I have taken from the software. Uh, so you can play this uh, software and take a beautiful pictures, and uh, you can kind of see it's on the same the same graph. Doing uh, with different aspect ratio from 2.5, 5, 2.5, uh, 5, 5, 10, and 20 aspect ratio. Uh, next, I did the same for the 80 meters per second. It's kind of again the similar, very similar results. No point to discuss it. 
So we can plot uh, those graphs, uh, uh, drug graphs for the different speed, 20 and 80 meters, and uh, look at the curves and see actually what is the difference, where is the induced drug, is there a difference between the induced drug or viscous drug and total drug and so on. We can also plot the lift uh, coefficient uh, for a different speed, 20 and 80 meters per second in this case. And uh, what I see is surprisingly similar results. Not sure why, but the lift coefficient behaves the same way, kind of. Okay, and now the fun part, the analytical approximation. So we know this equation from the previous section, and uh, this is a very simple equation. So we have the aspect ratio, R, uh, and we have the shape factor, which is uh, for empty quink is 1. So what we can do, we can plot uh, we can plot this equation on the same, uh, we can plot the results mm, given by this equation on the same graph. Graph is the results uh, given by the uh, software simulation. So my Python is here, so I have plotted this graph, so this equation is computed in this section. So it's very simple, uh, you just take the lift coefficient, the lift coefficient uh, multiplied by lift coefficient, so the square of lift coefficient and divide by E, P, R. And uh, I was a bit uh, surprised, I would say, because the results are identical. For at least for SLM, uh, for the SLM two methods, methods we have the same result as uh, results from this equation. So you know that. Can zoom, zoom in. That's exactly the same, almost exactly the same. And this is very strange. Uh, I'm not sure whether whether software is doing its job or just using this equation. Uh, well. So if you use the software and you choose analysis and define analysis and you look at here and you use uh, VLM2 method, you're going to have the same result as the result from this equation, which is quite strange for the different aspect ratio from 2.5 to 20. We have the same results. Now if we change the, so this uh, parameter E is one for the elliptic wing and for the kind of squ squarish wing you have a bit less, 0 0.9. So if you put E equal to 0 0.9, so you, you do have the difference. So as if this equation was taken with E equal to 1, I would do exactly the same. Actually, we would have to write the software fast. Uh, so, uh, the same results for the high speed. So in this case we have 80 meters per second and E equal to 1 and the same the same correspondence, amazing correspondence. So uh, I haven't I haven't checked it for the I for the L L L T method, but uh, maybe it's different. And if you look here on those graphs, uh, I also had this uh, surprising observation that uh, where is the graph? That for the VLM2 method we have the lift versus alpha, kind of the straight line, and it does not matter at, at which speed you're going, you have the same curve. It's kind of strange. The same curve for the induced drug. Just flat line. Whereas for LLT method we have uh, a small variation for the lift versus alpha and uh, induced drug. So maybe for the LLT method, I'm going to have a bit different result results. Not going to have the same perfect match between the experiments. Uh, experiments. I mean, uh, simulation and uh, and this equation. Okay, and so let's jump to conclusions. So we know uh, at this point how to design a wing, how to choose the parameters for this wing. Uh, how to run simulation. Uh, we can know how to plot the graphs. And uh, we can conclude that... Uh, the, so the original question was how to uh, choose the best uh, possible airfoil for the uh, wing. So the wing and the plane actually depends... Uh, the uh, type of the wing depends on the application. So for instance, if you would like to, fast, uh, if you would like to fly fast, 
it, they need to have high lift coefficient because the, lift, uh, the lifting force is proportional to the speed of the flight. So you probably would like to have uh, a lift coefficient small somewhere here. But what you would like to have, to have uh, as small drag as possible. To have as small drag as possible. So if you look at those graphs, so total graph, induced drug, and viscous drug, what you can uh, note that for induced drug, so the drug dependent on the uh, wing size, actually this drug is close to zero for the small angles, angles of attack. And uh, the small uh, lift coefficient is actually happens when you have small angles of attack, so small lift meaning the small angle of attack, and for the small angle of attack, induced drug is zero. So we don't care about the induced drug. Uh, how about viscous drug? So the viscous drug is the important factor. It's not zero, it has some value, and this value actually determines the minimum, minimum value of the drug. So what you have to do, you have to choose the airfoil with the minimum, uh, the airfoil providing the minimum viscous drug. And secondary, uh, for the fast, for the fast, flying plane or wing you would like to have uh, a shorter a shorter wing span so maybe having a smaller aspect ratio of this wing so but but if you like to uh, fly at high uh, at low speed then in that case you would have to have high lift uh, coefficient for the small speed you have to have as high lift as you possibly can and in that case uh, what you're facing is uh, induced drug because it just blow, blows up, those curves are going up right away. So how to deal with that? You just uh, use the wind with the high aspect ratio. So the red curve, high aspect ratio, means that you have minimal induced drug. And for the short wings, let's say the, the yellow curve, 2.5 aspect ratio, or even 5. So 5 2.5, there is not a big difference. Uh, you have huge induced drag, so don't use those wings, just uh, use the long wings for the slow flying airplanes. Okay, where is my image? Yeah, so uh, at this picture you can see all the wings we have. So this wing is a, is a long wing for the slow flying airplane with high angle of attack. So we need we need high angle of attack because we need high uh, uh, because there is no air to support this wing. Uh, lift is proportional to the speed of the air, and if the air is uh, if the speed is not there, we have small speed. Then you have to have high high lift, meaning that we have high angle of attack, and that is, is meaning that we're going to have uh, formation of the vortices, and the only. Uh, thing to deal with that is to use long wing. So in this case, we have long wing with uh, small vortices at the back. But if we would like to fly fast, in that case, uh, we have enough enough lift, enough air is coming through the, the wing. So the lift coefficient don't have to be uh, big. This might be close to zero. And if the lift coefficient close to zero, uh, the vortices are not forming at the same rate as they are at high angles of attack. Okay, that's, that's it for now.